Good evening, everyone. I'm Blake Hanson. We are beginning to see some election results come in. We'll be continuing to follow those results as we make our way throughout the evening. First, we want to get to the GOP primary in the race for presidents. No surprise here that Donald Trump has a sizable lead over his opponent. 74% to Nikki Haley with 21% will be a major a factor tonight how Nikki Haley does and whether she decides to continue on in this race, something that she says she will do in the Democratic race as well. Also, no surprise uh, that President Joe Biden is uh, carrying a sizable lead in that race. 88 uh, percent of the vote in his case over his opponents in that. Uh, as we look at the GOP primary for U.S. Senator Ted Cruz is vying uh, to carry on and continue his seat. He has a sizable lead, 89% over his nearest opponent. One of the big questions, though, is going to be who he faces in November in the Democratic primary. Colin Allred so far is carrying enough of the votes, still early in the evening, but enough of the votes to potentially avoid a runoff against State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who has 11 percent. Colin Allred already with some strong numbers in areas like Harris County, where he doesn't have the same sort of name recognition that he does in North Texas, a good sign for him. Also, there are some congressional races where several longtime members of Congress are not running for re-election. That includes House District 12 in Tarrant and Parker counties, the longtime seat of Kate Granger. Uh, a battle of endorsements in this race. Craig Goldman uh, has backed by Governor Abbott, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, Governor, former Governor Rick Perry as well. He has 54% of his vote over businessman John O'Shea, which has the backing of Ken Paxton. Uh, Texas House races, there are several races playing out across the state where that divide within the Texas Republican Party is very visible. You see no results here, but Collin County's early votes show that incumbent State Representative Jeff Leach has the lead over Darren Mice, a former Allen City Councilman. This is a key race to watch because rem remember Jeff Leach, a big supporter of the impeachment of Ken Paxton, a fellow Collin County Republican. Ken Paxton has endorsed Mice. We'll continue to look throughout the evening and see how much value Ken Paxton's endorsement has as he tries to unseat and kind of have his revenge tour against those who voted to impeach him. Uh, another situation, another seat where a uh, member of Congress is retiring in this case, uh, Michael Burgess, uh, multiple candidates in this race. Brandon Gill so far with an early lead. He's the son of conservative commentator Dinesh D'Souza. Gill has the backing of former President Trump in this race. Uh, John Huffman, mayor of South Lake, with 10% of the vote. Scott Army with 16%. We'll be watching that one throughout the evening as well. And then there is the matter of who will take over for Colin Allred, who's uh, opting to vacate his seat in order to run for Senate. State Representative Julie Johnson with an early lead of 46% over Dr. Brian Williams. But it needs she needs to get 50 percent to avoid that runoff. Justin Moore with 11 percent as well. We'll be watching. This is a case, a race that moves to the runoff as well. Lots of storylines that are playing out. What will happen with school vouchers? Governor Abbott has, of course, been campaigning across the state uh, over the past months uh, against candidates who would not support his voucher initiatives. We'll see if he has success there. And of course, uh, Ken Paxton, uh, he's not only endorsing those who are challenging those who supported impeachment, but uh, also in some criminal court of appeals races as well. We'll be watching that as well. All night long, we'll have election results streaming on fox4news.com. Make sure to look there. We'll, of course, check in here as well with updates on the various races. And our full election coverage begins on Fox 4 News at 9. We'll see you back there then.